Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? I hope you are all in a good mood because this morning or night, wherever you are listening to me, we are going to talk about a very, very uh, interesting and basically why, why I am here, why I am doing what I am doing kind of topic. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm having a little <clears throat> expression issues. So today I'm going to talk about how I healed my son's severe developmental delays. Okay. All right. So let's begin. I am going to be, um, oh, there are people on, online already. Salamu alaikum. I think that's Nazmun Nahar Apu as well as Sufia, right? Did I, did I uh, pronounce your name correctly? Sufia or Safi? I'm not sure. Please let me know uh, in the comment. How are you doing? So today it's a very important. Yeah, Sophia, I was right. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Please give me a moment to just get my bearings on because kids are at home. It's summer and then we are having a lot of stuff going on at home. So today I'm going to be talking about how I help my son overcome his developmental delays and how I did that. So I am going to be describing uh, the whole talk. I have separated the whole talks in three uh, stages. The first one I'm going to be talking about symptoms, okay? Symptoms and the delays that we uh, had with him. Then I'm going to be talking about what are the things that I tried for him? What are the diet what are the detoxes what are the lifestyles and things like that that i have tried for him and uh you know the experiments that i had with him and then i am going to be talking about what i learned from my journey <clears throat> what i learned from my journey and what i now teach to my students and everybody in between okay all right so the symptoms that i started with my son we actually saw him having delays in eye contact, in sleep problems, in communication from the age of seven months. So usually what happens is sometimes some of my students come to me and then they're saying that their child was fine for maybe one year or maybe one and a half year or maybe two years and then they started seeing regression. So for us, we have, uh, we have been kind of seeing his slow development since very early on okay so i as a neurodiverse i knew by that by the time i was mothering him i knew that i am a neurodiverse so i was kind of ready for him to have neurodiverse traits okay i was ready to have him have neurodiverse traits so what i did was when i saw him not focused not interested to interact. I just thought he's like me. He's just, he's like me trying to avoid social contacts and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, I have a question here. Let me, let me, uh, answer this one before I dive in because today I'm using my phone as my camera and the, the screen will be very small. Okay. Hello doctor in Bangladesh. Which doctor should I go to for autism or who is the best doctor? Can you please suggest? Okay. If the doctors and the centers really helped us, I wouldn't have been here. Yesterday, someone actually uh, DM'd me asking, saying that, which doctors should I go? Where should you refer? So I'm like, listen, mom, if going to the doctors, if going to the centers helped me, then I wouldn't have been here with Autism Success Academy with, for you all, right? So my, my take, just stay with me, stay with me in this, uh, talk, in this talk today, because you will be learning how you can do all of these things for your child without running into different people, okay? All right, so let's begin. Okay, so let's start. So I was seeing a lot of his traits and I accepted those traits as part of being, uh, you know, maybe he's a neurodiverse. But the thing is, with time, the situation got really worse. With time, the situation got really worse. 
and then then his sleep regression started he wouldn't sleep until 2 or 3 a.m and then i was obviously a working mom it was really <clears throat> putting a lot of stress on me a lot of stress and a lot of uh you know the whole day was like i i am totally foggy i can't think i don't have energy i was irritated anxious and and i would just you know scream at everyone so that's not a very lovely place to be because i myself am i like to be in a cozy cozy environment i like to be calm i like to be soft and soft spoken and what not so his delays in eye contact his delays in speech communication sleep health severe constipation uh he was not uh, potty train we couldn't potty train him because he wouldn't understand things he would poop very weirdly in very weird places he would have extreme anger he would break things he would even uh hit himself he was self harming he would uh, hurt his head he uh, he also broke his arm one day so yeah we have gone through a lot of stress for him <laughs> nazmo nahara who says salam looking so nice with hijab and dress now i am going to listen to you <laughs> okay she is one of our recent student and um we are very much excited to have her inside and help her go through her her life with us her journey with us okay so coming back to the point when your child is not sleeping is not eating because muhammad couldn't chew also you know when i would feed muhammad something he would just go he would just swallow he wouldn't chew and if a child is not chewing and then i'm telling the doctor that my son is not chewing the doctor you know what they said they said like it's not necessary for him to chew if you are if you are uh, if he's pooping is he pooping i'm like yeah but not regularly and he's having constipation so he's like the doctor was like it's okay he'll learn to chew and that went on for about 2 years because i listened to the doctors to the experts that whatever the expert is saying is okay is okay so this is one of the caveat that happens with us parents on the spectrum and that is we except even though our gut and our common sense is saying that it's not okay because if your child is not chewing properly that tells me now that your child has hypertonia of the of the you know specifically maybe of the cheek muscles because when your child's brain cannot send information to the cheek muscles to the jaw muscles to the teeth properly then the child cannot cannot chew things okay and if a child cannot chew things the child has has problems to be able to articulate words so that he can speak okay and then if this condition goes on then you will get the diagnosis of as asparaxia or apraxia something like that i'm not very much interested in diagnosis i keep saying that to my clients all the time i'm not very much interested in in what diagnosis your child has because the diagnosis is just a label and it's just a way of them categorizing your child and then there is no solution so when i am labeling something when i am putting on a lot of stuff on a child like your child has this problem has that problem has a lot of problem and then there is nothing to do how do you feel how does that make you feel tell me mom how does that make you feel when when i went to several doctors several neurologists several high flying doctors the best in bangladesh the best in canada all i got was keep your child al alive one of the best neuro 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 i'm so angry when i when i think about her one of the best child leading child developmental uh, pediatrician she told me to keep my son alive she just simply told me to keep your just keep him alive when i told him when i told her that my son is not eating properly we cannot feed him he is severely picky and then she would be like just keep him alive 
And I'm like, what are you saying? When I told her that is diet important because we all know from, from primary education at least that health is very much important for all sorts of development and health needs nutrition, right? It's common, common grade five science. How does top level scientists, top level uh, professionals and doctors miss out on this very important point? I have no idea. Okay, moving on to my story because today's topic is just about my story on what I did, how I overcame my son's developmental delays and Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, my son has grown so well beyond our expectations because we were always told to just go with the flow, just accept what's happening and just, you know, have our lifestyle around it without any solution. And I myself am a very solution oriented person, a very goal focused person. So if I have a goal, if I don't have solution, then there's a problem. So what I did is after running around, just like you guys, just like the mom or dad, I think that was a mom who uh, posed that question. Just like you running around looking for solutions after solutions after solutions. And then I was like, one day something happened. So I, I am pretty much sure that one day came to you as well. You might be going with the flow, going to therapy centers, going to doctors, staying at home, leaving your jobs, because a lot of care, a lot of moms ha just have to leave their job and stay at home. There's nothing wrong being a stay at home mom. But as a, as a career woman myself, as a career driven woman myself who had dreams of achieving the best academic life, I understand the sacrifice, the pain, the tears it causes just to leave your job, just to leave your career because your career is is an integrated part of you as well. I studied honors, I studied masters, you know, pharmacy, B firm, M firm, and then PhD. And I had to leave all those to stay at home so that I could take care of my son because nobody was there to take care of his needs. Even the daycare centers were scared of taking his, taking him on, okay? So I do understand your pain and the thing is, I always tell my students and I always tell you all, my community members, that we are not just parents. We are human beings. We have our own dreams. We have our own goals. We have our own aspirations because we did not, Allah didn't create us to be unhappy. Allah didn't create us to be sad, unhealthy, disease ridden, poor, he didn't create us for those. Most of those things are created by, by human beings. Most of our pains and sufferings are created by us, not by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he said in Quran, fair and square, very clearly, he did not create a single disease or disorder in the world that does not have a solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create a single disease or disorder that does not have a solution. I'm not using the word cure because this is not a disease, because autism is not a disease, okay? It's not infectious. It's not really a genetic problem as well. It's epigenetics in nature. So if it was genetic per se, then majority of the moms who come to me, they're not autistic themselves. They're not neurodivers themselves. Then why are their kids neurodivers? Why are their kids autistic? I don't use the word autistic, but recently I have been thinking that sometimes I have to use words that maybe you guys are talking in the same language so that you understand what I'm speaking about. Okay. All right. So if you are struggling through similar symptoms, I understand you. I get you. I have been there. I am doing all those things at this moment as well. I'm helping a lot of moms achieve and overcome those delays. So now I'm going to be talking about what I did 
to overcome my child's developmental delays okay all right so the first thing i did was let me let me this uh, let me share a story with you walaikum assalam naima sultan apo kemonachen okay so what i did was i kept waiting for the government i kept waiting for the officials i kept waiting for the professionals and everybody to to guide me into achieve the developmental delays i am i was not actually looking for making my son neurotypical that's not the goal that doesn't need to be the goal same for you as well if your child is neurodiverse you do not have to make your child neurotypical that's not necessary all you have to do is if your child has developmental delays achieve them recover them then your child will be healthy happy successful for life that's all that i have to say i have to work on and that's all that i teach because a lot of parents have this confusion that they need to change the child it's not changing the child if your child is not able to speak then giving him the gift of speech is not changing the child if your child cannot poop because he is super constipated scared anxious crying bleeding then that's not healthy and happy for the child so help your child have a regular poop because when example if you are pooping regularly and in, in good quantity and what not you will feel like furfura you will feel really calm really awesome really happy and what not and so will your child a lot of our children on the spectrum who are constipated has behavior issues has anxious issues stress because of they cannot let go of their toxins properly and safely and softly a constipated person is a very angry person a constipated person be it a big adult or a child are not happy they are not happy you cannot be happy when you are super constipated it's not possible biologically okay so one day what happened i was very tired with ira she didn't sleep properly because she had a lot of her own issues as well so i was forcing muhammad to sleep i scolded him i actually pushed him to the bed and then and then forced him to sleep and after he went to sleep i was i was thinking like why was i why was why was he not ready to sleep why was he resisting his sleep because my son couldn't speak my son couldn't communicate so what i did was after he went to sleep i had a gut instinct like check to check him so as i was checking him i saw that his diaper was full of poo my son's diaper was full of poo and he could not tell me that mom i need to i need you to clean up and i forced my son to go to sleep in that poo filled diaper so that day i broke off and then i and i decided i had enough i am not going to be running around for neurologist i am not going to be running around for therapist i am not going to be running around for doctors no one i am not going to be running behind any autism professionals because i feel in my gut that they don't understand what they are doing and then an autism mom struggles began another level of struggle and my search for solution started okay that's when i started changing the diet just when i started changing his lifestyle doing detoxes and stuff like that i would try something and see how it how he reacts i would try another thing and see how he reacts so essentially me and my son became the guinea pig and essentially that's how our autism transformation and success program was born okay so the first thing that i did was since as a scientist myself since i since i have done my phd in natural medicine i knew already that modern medicine had a lot of back back you know pools 
side effects and stuff like that because I'm a pharmacist remember I have 16 plus years of experience working as a pharmacist learning teaching researching on pharmacy so I decided to not go forward with modern medicine but to go back into natural medicine so what I did was I found an Ayurvedic doctor and I consulted with him I in my quest to find the doctor I have knocked many doors I have went to many people because not all solutions are catered towards because even in Ayurveda they, don't, they do not have any specific autism related uh, you know solutions so what I did was I, I had a had an idea that I first need to understand why this happens and if there is a physiological reaction or if there is a physiological connection of autism with any of the body parts that was my first step to find out if it's an internal condition because if it's a physical condition if autism and the developmental delays my son was going through if they are physiological in nature then we can do something about it because if it's physical in nature then I can I can take medicines I can give supplements I can give food and I can give nutrition and everything right Salaam Alaikum Mahiyapu Shamsul Haq Bhaiya Joba Joba Apu oh there are so many people of you thank you so much so then I went to that person and then he was like listen do some research specifically on gut brain connection and then give him grain free food hello nena how are you doing and also he gave us a lot of a lot of ayurvedic medicines okay so then i started the research and then i found actually there are lots of medical researches there are lots of uh, scientific researches that says that that says that the brain has a deeper connection with the gut and then we can actually help our autism kids by healing their gut because the gut is where serotonin is produced which helps your child regulate mood the gut is where melatonin is produced because that that is what helps your child to sleep the gut produces immunity which helps your child fight disease infections the gut produces neuro uh, neurotransmitters which helps the neurons communicate with each other to learn to speak to communicate to express do you see the connection now how deeply an autism brains gut is connected actually all guts and brains are connected since we are talking about autism kids that's why I'm focusing more mostly on the kids on the spectrum okay all right so all those researches I was like fascinated I'm like wow when I go to the doctor they never say about diet they never say about detoxification they never say that the gut and the brain is connected they never even give us a single probiotic supplement then the doctors are not even giving a single probiotic supplement or, or not even telling us to give them probiotic food so I was like wow this is crazy man what I started doing was I started writing blog which is my neurodiverse nerd because I wanted other mothers and other parents to learn that yes science is actually saying science has already proven that your child's gut healing is very much essential and crucial for the development but the doctors and the pharma companies they're hiding all those things because if you understand that you have the power then you do not need medicines you do not need to go to the doctors for me I was looking for to do one and then solve for the rest of the world less rest of the life kind of situation I do not like the fact that I have to go keep going to a center keep going to a doctor for years and years and years I don't like that so what I did was I was finding solution that would that when put into place one time 
will go on, be sustainable, be giving us results on and on and on. And that's what's happening. And that's what's happening with us. And that's what's happening with our clients, with our students, and with all the babies that we work with. Okay? I tried Ayurveda. I tried GAPS diet. I tried spiritual stuff. I tried natural medicine. I tried lifestyle, parenting, and also inner healing. And then I learned <clears throat> some very, very important steps. Some very important stuff that I come every week and try to teach you guys. And if somebody is interested to learn more deeper and to work on their child, that's when they agree to, you know, start working with us. So when I was working, when I was doing the Ayurveda, I found it pretty hard because Ayurveda says that you have to cook every meal. So as a mom, modern mom, cooking every single meal is really hard. I don't know about you. I'm pretty sure you will find it hard as well. Cooking every meal fresh from scratch is hard. Finding all organic, something that's grown on the backyard and, and no pesticide, no bad energy, no bad aura is hard. It's very, very hard. And going through those 100% Ayurvedic lifestyle made me more crazy because that is not sustainable. Following 100% Ayurvedic lifestyle and diet is not sustainable. It's not practical also. So after many soul crushing days, I was like, I asked my husband, like, I think I need permission because I cannot give myself the permission because I feel 100% responsible for my son. So I am trying something that's literally killing me. So can you please give me the permission to try a softer approach? to try an approach that that might make me feel like I'm a lazy mom, but will actually make sure that I am not dying of frustration. I am not dying of exhaustion. So my, my husband said, like, okay, I give you permission to try something that is easier on you because yes, you are raising your kids totally alone in Canada. There is nobody around you, it's pandemic going on. So yes, you better take care of yourself as well. So what I did was then I shifted to uh, GAPS diet and then following full GAPS diet did not help us that much because GAPS diet essentially is like a westernized version and then Western people eat a lot of cheese, a lot of dairy. So when I would give cheese to Muhammad, he would have those regression coming on. And then I was like, uh, that's not the solution. So I then researched if Ayurveda says that, you know, certain foods should not be given based on the constitution of the person. And then yes. So, you know, the experiment of this and that and amalgamating, incorporating them and building a lifestyle that was sustainable, building a organized way of cooking for him, of feeding him, of putting him into routines really helped us a lot. And that could help you guys, could not. I am 100% sure that will help you guys. As a, as a scientist, I have to use could, may, right? Because so that you, you guys don't sue me. <laughs> okay, there is no 100% guarantee in this world, but there is a huge guarantee, a huge percentage that what I'm teaching to you guys actually works because it's backed by thousands of years of medicine, thousands of years of traditional medicine, and it's also backed by scientific proofs. The difference between we not learning about the scientific proofs is because our professionals, they are either hiding it purposefully or they are not learning themselves or they are so old that they don't have time they're so so busy they're already getting lots of money by having you guys coming to them every day like flocks of sheep 
So they are settled. They don't need to learn new things. But you and your child, you cannot be just a number on somebody's paycheck. Shushmita Apu, Mili Apu, your child matters. Your child matters. Apnar bapcha, apnar kache, toto tuku important. Joto tuku amar kache, amar bapcha. Kintu unno joto doctor kache, amra doorai na keno. Udar kache, amader bapcha ko hono important hobe na. The doctors will never treat your child like their own child, like his own child or her own child. And many of the doctors and many of the professionals that we go to, they don't have kids on the spectrum. So they actually don't understand your pain. They don't understand your pain. If you never, if you can, if you can, if you can see, you will never understand the pain of a blind person. If you can walk, you can never understand the pain of a person who cannot walk. The only people who understands your pain, your desires are those who have worked on that path and have achieved those dreams and goals. It's totally possible to regain most of the developmental delays that you have in your child. If your child gets the proper support because brain development Autism is a neurodevelopmental delay. Neurodiversity is a different thing. Autism and developmental delay is a different thing. May, one of the main problems that I see is our uh, autism community mixes these two things together. Our autism communities mixes these two things together. They confuse between neurodiversity and autism and developmental delay. So, Neurodiversity is okay as long as the child can speak, communicate, understand the world, go to school. You understand? Get a job, marry, have kids. Neurodiverse person can have a normal, healthy, regular life. But the problem with severe or moderate autism kids who, with a long list of developmental delays is they become disabled. That, that child become disabled because that child cannot speak, cannot verbalize, cannot communicate, cannot protect themselves, cannot tell you that mom, I am hungry, I am sad, I am upset, I am depressed. So a child on the spectrum with severe developmental delays will not have a healthy, happy and successful life. And it's those kids that we are fighting for. It's those kids that I am fighting for. Neurodiversity is fine because I am neurodiverse myself. I turned out well, even though I had severe physical, emotional, psychological, mental, sexual traumas behind me. But I was able to overcome all of those. Why? Because my brain had quite good understanding of the world. But if your child is unfocused, is not understanding everything, not talking, not communicating, not having proper behavior, sleep, poop and everything that you know you are struggling with, then you definitely need to take care of your child. Even though you're just goli maro ya, just brush fire all those people who are saying that this is norms and reality. No, because a, a human baby deserves to have a regular healthy life, deserves to have a regular healthy life regular sleep, regular nutrition, regular health, regular school going capacities, understanding the world, be able to enjoy life, be able to earn for themselves, be able to lead a successful life. That's all we are all about. So with my experiences, with my experiments with my son and when I started getting lots of results and results after results, Alhamdulillah, I then started working with moms like you and then my program Autism Transformation and Success was born and this is singularly one of the best, I would say the best program out there. Why? Because this is the only program that is making sure that you is just as important as your child. Most of the program or most of the solution is just focused on the child, even though there is no solution. But still, it's, at, 
it's at least focused on the child. No therapist, no scientist, no doctors ever ask the mom, how are you doing? Are you sleeping? Are you eating? Can you, can you, are you anxious? Are you stressed? How are you feeling, mom? And I'm the only person who makes sure that I take care of the mom just as much as I take care of the child. Because I believe the reason why I was able to work with Muhammad and get such results is because I was taking care of myself. The major re reason why I was able to build this whole practice is because I was working on myself. The way we are parented, the way we are raised up in our culture, where whichever country that you grow, that you have grown, affects our belief system, affects our mentality, affects our thought patterns and everything. So our thoughts creates our realities, our beliefs creates our realities. So if I believe that a mom's job is just to cook and clean and provide kids, then I will just do that. But if my mom has taught me that you have more to accept from life, you have more to give from life, then I will go that way. Okay, so we have a question. Up with the regular diet plan there. Diet. Okay, regular diet plans. I have, I have given a lot of uh, talks already on grain-free diet and stuff like that. Even in our, even inside our program, I don't give diet plans per se. What I teach everyone is the basics of what you should and should not give to your child. And then you rotate the vegetables and fruits and legumes that you can. Okay. But in future, I will try to make some posts on uh, stuff that you can try at home as well. All right. So coming back, you can... You have the right to dream your child have a healthy life, have a successful life because you are a parent, you are a mom, you are a dad. It's your responsibility to see that your child is growing well, that your child is able to take care of himself when you are not around. Because someday we will die. Someday I will die. And even if I leave one or two houses for my son, and if my son cannot talk, does not understand, then do you think that asset is going to help your son? Because your son will not even be able to make sure that the asset is running properly. Make sure that the asset, that he can actually gather assets himself. When we talked on phone, you made sure I was mentally and physically okay. You were concerned about my mental health as a mother. Thumbs up. Thank you, Nana. Yes, I am very much concerned about a mother as much as I'm concerned about the child. Because it's the mother who's the tree and the child is the fruit. You can never have a healthy fruit on a, on a, on a you know, disease ridden or poor or you know shrunken plant or tree the tree needs to be healthy and strong so that the tree can bear fruits that's healthy and strong okay so this summer we are we are we actually thank you for staying until this this because i have a big announcement i have decided to bring in another coach under us so she is actually a graduate of Autism Success Academy and she she is doing fabulous with her daughter and she is going to be our new diet and lifestyle success mentor. So she will be teaching our clients and students and she's both she's speaking both in Bengali and English so she will be able to discuss and give diet plans and give specific solutions and share another mom's point of view along with mine and I'm very much excited to have her because I am building <clears throat> I am building Susanna Pu. hello how are you doing 
So I am building up this whole system, this whole community just to cater you guys, just to show you guys that you can really achieve so much more and life does not have to be painful or sad or upsetting or depressing. If you have a child who has severe developmental delay, your quality of life is very poor. You might be sleeping, but the sleep is not restful. You might be eating, but you're not actually tasting anything. You might be going to picnics, but you will not be happy. Because deep down there will always be that pain, that super pain of seeing another healthy child. Like Allah, why isn't my child normal or healthy and happy and speaking? Ami ki emon guna kursi jamar we, we ask that question, but it's not any guna. It's not any guna. You do not have to feel guilty or you don't have to shame yourself or blame yourself. It's not your fault that your child has developmental delays. If anybody is to blame, I would say it's the modern society because the amount of chemicals and pollutions and stress and toxins that we are always under obviously affects our child inside our womb and obviously affects the child's growing up. You see? Let's say if I take... Do I have anything? Okay. Let's say if I take this cup and it has a slight crack somewhere and I have give, give, uh, gave birth to this cup who has a slight crack somewhere. So now if... I start giving if the world start giving pressure the crack will start getting bigger and then water will start spilling right that's what happens to autism kids when your child was inside of you you had a very stressful life somehow you have gone through some sort of trauma or you had additional traumas that you had previously your diet was not very well you had chemicals and toxins and poisons coming through by your the air that you are breathing, by the food that you are eating, by the, by the stuff that you are having around you. So your child has that tendency towards delays. And then when the child is born, we still give on giving him stuff that he cannot digest because we don't know that he cannot digest shuji. We don't know that he cannot digest dood, milk, and, and wheat products or grain products because we don't know that our child body is not actually digesting properly. Because when the child is eating something and then pooping, we are very much sure that he's okay, right? When the child is eating and the child is pooping, even if it's constipation and whatnot, I am very much okay. We are usually told that it's okay, your child is okay. But you don't know that deep down inside your child's body and brain, the crack is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the developmental delays starts. So the earliest you can work on your child is the best. Joto early apnar bachcha ke apne kaat start korben, toto best result paben. Because the earliest you work on your child, the less is the damage. It's easier to solve a crack that's small than to have a crack that's this whole big, you understand? So as a wrap up, it's totally possible to achieve most of your develop, most of your child's developmental delays within six months to a year. What we do is we try to teach you all and also through our paid programs that it takes about two years for maximum developmental gains. After that, you can definitely have a regular eating habits. Just avoid the you know super bad things because they're not healthy anyways whether your child has autism or not sugar colors preservatives wheat those are not for human consumption whether your child has autism or not those are not for human consumption too much sugar actually wrecks havoc in the in the head the brain heart diabetes and all those things right so if you are interested to learn more, to work with us, use hashtag interested and then somebody from my team will 
connect with you. We'll send you details. You can also um, leave us a WhatsApp message. I will leave the number in the description. You can set up a meeting with us. We call, uh, we call that Clarity and Reclaim call so that we can discuss further. If you are ready to take the plunge, if you are ready to take the responsibility, if you are ready to just give it a last shot, a serious shot, because summer is the best time. And also we are having another very wonderful coach working with us to give you guys more and more and more. Because I believe in this thing. If I am paying $5, I want to get the value of 10. Are you with me? So I have built our program in a way that if you are spending an amount X, I try my best to give you 10 times that value. Okay. Lucky Apu, Assalamu Alaikum. Mami join korte chai, but kobe join hote parvo. You can join anytime you want. You have filled up the form. Apni form fill up kore chen. Uh, WhatsApp number. My, my teammate has given the WhatsApp number here. It's one plus one. Oh, who is this girl? Plus one six one three four one zero two zero two seven. That's our hotline number. You can leave a message and we will get back to you to book your call. And as for Lucky Apu, your, uh, your, uh, Application has been accepted. Apna application accept kora hoyeche. Apni jekono time join korte parven as as soon as you start giving the paying the installments or whatever, then you can start. Anyways, okay. So let me know in the comment if this resonated with you because I am very much excited to help you move further to help you achieve all those goals for your child because it's totally possible. And even if you don't want to work with us, that's totally fine. We have a lot of resources in our guide section. Go through them, take part in them. And if you are watching this on YouTube or in replay, give me hashtag replay. And I would, you know, say to you guys to subscribe to my channel because that helps me. And then share the video with other parents because that helps us a lot too. To find more people to grow our community even bigger because I am seeing that we can help inshallah and you will be very much happy to be part of this whole system i love you love you love you all thank you so much for staying until the end if you are interested to learn more use hashtag interested and if you are ready to work with us then leave us a comment leave us a um, dm or a whatsapp message in the number provided and i'll see you in the next one allah fizz